All right, is the sound of snoring keeping you awake all night? Because it could be sleep apnea robbing you of a good night's rest, and for many, it can often go undiagnosed. So according to a new report released by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, the sleep disorder costs the U.S. billions of dollars each year. Wow. Family physician Dr. Jennifer Caudill is here with us this morning mm -hmm. about the warning signs, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, good morning, doctor. Et cetera. Thanks it's good to see you guys. Us. This is a really important topic. I'm so glad we're talking about this. All right, let's this. get to it, Dr. Jennifer. Yes. Let's break down the difference between occasional snoring and sleep apnea. Well, you know, that's a great question because people with sleep apnea often do snore, mm -hmm. but they are very different. Sleep apnea, actually, the word apnea means the absence of breathing. And so when people have sleep apnea, what actually happens is in, at night they stop breathing for very short periods of time. Often they don't even know about it. They don't wake up often, but they're stopping breathing, and that causes lots of problems. Usually it's because the muscles in the back of the airway aren't working properly to keep that airway open and that airway, that air moving. So it's this, the absence of breathing, which is, is really important. Dr. Jen, it's my understanding that this typically goes undiagnosed. It does, and I see this a lot as a family practice doctor. A lot of my patients, it's amazing how many people actually have sleep apnea, don't even know it. The National Sleep Foundation says 18 million people, Americans, have sleep apnea, which is a lot of us. So it's really a condition to kind of be on the lookout for. All right, and so I know there are side effects, obviously, yes. and um, if left untreated, I know it also can lead to other health issues. It really can, and you know, a lot of people say, well, how would I know if I have sleep apnea? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as I mentioned, some people do snore, but that's not often really, the, well, that's one of the things we often look at, yes. but something else they may say is, you know, doc, I'm getting eight hours of sleep at night, but I fall asleep in, when I'm sitting in a chair at work, I'm falling asleep when I'm driving, I'm feeling exhausted, I have to take a nap. That daytime sleepiness often is a big sign. So Sometimes loss of concentration and mood issues because what happens when we're not sleeping properly is we don't feel our best. But the biggest thing, though, is that down the line, all of these changes and not, you know, stopping breathing for multiple periods of time at night, those small periods of time, can lead to conditions like high blood pressure and heart disease and things like that. So it's more than just feeling sleepy, mm -hmm. and that's really what I want people to know. So, Doctor, Very how important. do you take the step, the leap of faith yeah. in, in getting diagnosed? Yeah, and well, I think the leap of faith, first of all, um, and it really is a leap of faith, right, because you really really are saying and you're asking yourself what's is there something wrong and do I need to do something about it first thing you should do is see your doctor because there's a number of things that we can do talk with your doctor about your symptoms in detail and one thing when you come to my office I want you to do is to note all the medications you're taking including those over-the-counter ones like Benadryl and stuff that you may not think is important I actually might think is important tell me if you're drinking alcohol or doing anything else before bedtime and actually ask your bed partner that person you sleep with do you stop breathing at night are you choking are you asking for air, oftentimes those are big signs that may lead us to a sleep apnea diagnosis. And then, of course, as a doctor, one of the things I may want to do is schedule you for a sleep study, which is the main way that we um, figure out if somebody has sleep apnea or not. Sure. Okay, let's touch on this before we go. Uh, yes. Let's talk about treatment options. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So this is um, one of the main treatments for obstructive sleep apnea is, and that's what we're talking about, is a machine called the CPAP machine. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. We have pictures of it right yes. there. That yeah. is a CPAP machine. Um, it's actually a machine, a device that people wear over over their faces, their mouth, and or their nose. And it keeps that airway moving so that their airway doesn't collapse and stop them from breathing at night. That is usually the mainstay of treatment. But let me also encourage people out there. There are, I mean, I've had patients who just by losing weight are able to get rid of their sleep apnea. So lose weight, make sure that you're not drinking alcohol, quit smoking, exercise. Those things do make a difference. But oftentimes we see the, the CPAP machine as a mainstay. Dr. Jen, thank you so much for it's, being with it's us. It's good today. to see you guys. Pleasure, thank doctor. you. Thank you.